In one of the first videos, I said there were three ways of representing vectors. The first was using the letters at either end of a line segment, as here with the vector AB. The second is by labelling them with a small letter such as vectors A and B in this diagram. Now the third method is using column vectors, and that's what we're going to deal with in this video. Up until now, we have not needed a grid for any of our vector work, but we'll definitely need one for column vectors, although at this stage it doesn't necessarily have to have a set of axes. So, here's our grid, and using the column vector notation, vectors are denoted by two numbers written one above the other. The top number is the component of the vector in the x, that is, the horizontal direction, and the bottom number is the component in the y, the vertical direction. Now please make sure you don't get column vectors mixed up with coordinates, and don't draw a line under the top number so that it looks like a fraction. So here's a vector a, which is 3 over 5, i.e. its horizontal component is 3 units, going to the right as the 3 is positive, and its vertical component is 5, going upwards as the 5 is also positive. Now here's a vector b, which is 2 over minus 3, i.e. its horizontal component is 2 units to the right, and 3 units downwards, as the 3 is negative. Probably the simplest thing we can do with these is to add them, and you'll remember we do this by moving the beginning of the second vector to the end of the first vector. So that's the high road. The resultant vector, the low road, is from the beginning of vector A to the end of vector B. By counting squares, we can see this is the vector 5 over 2, which is exactly what we get if we simply add the x components and the y components, i.e. 3 over 5 plus 2 over minus 3 is 5 over 2. In a similar way, we can subtract the two vectors. Let's subtract the vector b from the vector a. And you'll remember we do this by adding the inverse of vector b. And it's not too difficult to see that the inverse of 2 over minus 3 must be minus 2 over 3. We join the beginning of the inverse of b to the end of a. This forms the high road. And the low road, the resultant vector, is directly from the beginning of vector a to the end of the inverse of vector b. By counting squares, we can see that this is the vector 1 over 8. And it's not surprising that we can also obtain this by adding the inverse of vector b to vector a. At this point, you may well have an insight as to why vector algebra is so similar to normal algebra. Every vector could be written as a column vector, and so when we're adding and subtracting vectors, all we're actually doing is adding and subtracting the x-direction components and the y-direction components. In fact, it would be very odd if vector algebra turned out to be quite different to normal algebra. So, adding and subtracting column vectors is no more difficult than adding and subtracting normal numbers. And that brings us to something we call linear combinations of vectors. If vector A is 5 over minus 2, say, and B is 3 over 4, we can work out any combination of these vectors, such as 3A plus 2B, or 4A minus 5B. Let's take the 4A minus 5B as an example. 4A minus 5B is 4 lots of 5 over minus 2, minus 5 lots of 3 over 4. Now, 4 times the vector 5 over minus 2 is pretty obviously the vector 20 over minus 8, and 5 times the vector 3 over 4 is the vector 15 over 20. So that gives us 4a minus 5b equals 20 over minus 8 minus 15 over 20. And this is calculated by subtracting 15 from 20 as the component in the x-direction and subtracting 20 from minus 8 
in the y direction and that gives us the vector 5 over minus 28. If you have a good facility with positive and negative numbers, you'll find this very easy after some of the stuff we've covered in the earlier videos. So now let's have a look at some problems that use this idea. The first problem is find the vector p given that 2a minus p equals b, where a is the vector 4 over 1 and b is the vector minus 2 over 6. Substituting the column vectors a and b into the equation 2a minus p equals b gives 2 times 4 over 1 minus p equals minus 2 over 6. Remember that vector algebra is very similar to normal algebra, so here we can add vector p to both sides, giving 2 times 4 over 1 equals minus 2 over 6 plus p. The minus p and the plus p on the left side cancel out, of course. Then we can subtract the vector minus 2 over 6 from both sides, giving 2 lots of 4 over 1, subtract minus 2 over 6 equals p. Multiplying out the first term gives 8 over 2, subtract minus 2 over 6 equals p. Subtracting the x and y components gives 10 over minus 4 equals p. Be careful here when subtracting the minus 2. And that's the answer. The vector p is 10 over minus 4. As a check, you could put p equals 10 over minus 4 back into the equation 2a minus p equals b, and you'll see it makes the equation true. And now you'll see there's nothing difficult about this. If you can solve normal algebraic equations, you won't have any trouble with these. Now here's a second, slightly more difficult problem. Find a linear combination of vectors a, which is 3 over 2, and b, which is 1 over 3, which is equal to vector c, 9 over 13. Now, a linear combination, remember, simply means so many of vector A combined with so many of vector B. So let's say we need P of vector A and Q of vector B. This gives us the equation PA plus QB equals C. And before we go on, please make sure you're clear that A, B and C are vectors and P and Q are scalars, that is, just normal numbers. Put in the column vectors for A, B and C and we get P times 3 over 2 plus Q times 1 over 3 equals 9 over 13. Multiplying these out gives 3P over 2P plus Q over 3Q equals 9 over 13. Now the numbers at the top of each column vector, i.e. the x components, must be equal, and the numbers at the bottom, that is the y components, must also be equal. So we can now write 3p plus q equals 9, and 2p plus 3q equals 13. And lo and behold, we have two easy simultaneous equations to solve. Call the first equation 1, and the second 2. Multiplying equation 1 by 3 and leaving equation 2 as it is gives 9p plus 3q equals 27 and 2p plus 3q equals 13. Call these equations 3 and 4 and subtract equation 4 from equation 3. This gives us 7p equals 14, i.e. p equals 2. Substituting this back into equation 1 gives 6 plus q equals 9, i.e. q is 3. So finally, we can say the required linear combination is 2a plus 3b. Now that wasn't too difficult, was it? Now the next video shows a similar problem, but one that involves slightly more algebra. So it's probably worth your having a look at that too.